Zipper rolls out to the right, pitches off to Taylor, and Taylor's to the 20. Down to the 15, down to 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Touchdown, Billy Taylor! Billy Taylor scored a touchdown from 21 yards out. The crowd goes berserk. It was November 22nd, 1969 that they came to Barry, Michigan, all dressed in maize and blue. The words were said, the prayers were read, and everybody cried. But when they closed the coffin, there was someone else inside. Oh, they came to Barry, Michigan, but Michigan wasn't dead. And when the game was over, it was someone else instead. Eleven Michigan Wolverines put on the gloves of gray, and as the organ played the victors, they laid Woody Hayes away. Under center is Wangler at the 45. He goes back. He's looking for a receiver. He throws downfield to fire. Fire! Who's got it better than us? Nobody! Welcome to the Michigan Man Podcast on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V-Sporto Network and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew for Wolverine fans from coast to coast. Go Blue, and welcome to our Illinois Visitors Edition of the show. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. My guest today is the radio play-by-play voice of the Fighting Illini, Brian Barnhart. Before he joins us, a few of my thoughts and Jim Harbaugh's. At his Monday presser, Jim was asked if this year's no-name defense was as good as last year's. Um, well, we really didn't put any any limit to the expectations Uh we thought that uh, our defense could be uh, could be really good. Had the license and the ability to be uh, to be an outstanding defense. You know, at the time, you know, I said that uh, called it the uh, no name defense in some ways. Uh, you know, where guys at each position were competing and to make a name for themselves. And um, I think that's that's transpired. Playing great team defense, each position group is really playing outstanding, and they're they're playing outstanding together. Jim said one thing is for certain. This week, we will be tested on both sides of the ball. Our run wall has been very good. It's going to be tested this week, um, probably like none other up to to this point. So Illinois is very strong at at the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. Outstanding run scheme, outstanding running back. So uh, it'd be be a real challenge and a task for our for our team this year and it's been one of our strengths really both both sides of the ball you know up front offensive line and defensive line and I really feel like our offensive line is going to be our uh, tested this week as well so uh yeah big challenge and we're preparing for it now fans are concerned with the passing game as we approach the end of the season Jim doesn't seem to be as concerned we're trying to improve everything running game passing game coverage I mean every phase of the game I mean in your opinion, the passing game isn't what the running game is. Um, this pass game, I mean, there's an adage in football, you have to make them stop something. If they if they don't take it away and they don't stop it, then you're kind of foolish to not not keep uh, attempting to, whether it's throw the ball or run the ball. But, uh, yeah, I feel good about feel really, really good about our offense, feel really, really happy um, coming off this last ball game and another really good performance. I can't remember the last time we turned the ball over, but it's – Playing really good sound football, playing really good up front. Yeah, there's things to work on on both sides of the ball, and we'll continue to do that. This week, we honor the seniors, and it is a big class. One Jim says has made his job a pleasure. Just tremendous. It's, uh, you know, it's a, it is a large group. I think somewhere around 40, 42, or 43. Been a tremendous, tremendous group. I mean, there's uh, it's made my uh, day-to-day so good, uh, just being around the type of guys that they are. I mean, they, they work so hard. It caused me very little grief at any time. Can't say enough good things, really. And, and they don't have adult problems. They just, uh, just really good, focused, genuine, down to earth guys. Uh, so, you know, some will be leaving the program, some will be back. Yeah, we we'll support them all. It's just been so good. A few weeks ago, this Illinois game was looking like a matchup between two teams contending for a possible playoff berth. A lot has changed in those two weeks. The Illini have lost two straight, and they are banged up on both sides of the ball. Still, they are not to be taken lightly. 
My guest today says Illinois is almost the mirror image of Michigan in how they play the game. Run the ball, be physical, don't turn it over, and play great defense. With us next is the radio play-by-play voice of the Fighting Illini, Brian Barnhart. So don't go away. Joining us on our visitors edition of the show this week is a radio play-by-play voice of Illinois football, Brian Barnhart. Great to have you back with us, Brian. Hey, good to be on. Thank you so much. Looking back at last Saturday, the Illini lost their second in a row, a a tough one, uh, 31-24 at home to Purdue. And as a result, that West race is very much in chaos, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's the polar opposite of what's happening in the East. I mean, uh, basically, as you know, it's Michigan, Ohio State, one of those two is going to be an indie, and I think I saw this morning there's 256 different combinations uh, for the Big Ten West. <laughs> so, and, and Illinois, you know, they put themselves in that position because they had control of it. Uh, you know, they basically had two home games. They were 7-1 and one coming home, playing uh, Michigan State, a team, of course, that got into the, the famous uh, tunnel uh, scuffle, if you will, up there in, in Michigan, and, and they're reeling, and they've got guys suspended, and they came in, and they pulled together, and And Illinois got off to a fast start. They picked off a pass right the first play of the game, and they scored eventually a touchdown and uh, seemed to be in in good shape. And and then Michigan State fought back, and and the wind was a factor in the game, and Illinois had a six-yard punt, and uh, they were missing a couple of key defensive guys, and Michigan State took advantage. And next thing you know, you're down eight. You're trying to come back and tie it, and you run out of time. And, And then Purdue comes in, and they had lost two in a row, and and uh, Aiden O'Connell's uh, one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten. Uh, you know, certainly gets rid of the ball quickly. And Illinois was still missing some some key defensive guys in that game, and and uh, they got burned a little bit a couple of times on penalties. Some that probably shouldn't have been called, and and some that were that deserved to be called, where they beat themselves. I think on one drive they gave Purdue 50 yards of uh, penalty yards in a 70-yard drive, and. And uh, you just can't do that. And those were things they had not been doing. They had been healthy, and they had not been committing those kind of penalties. Uh, turnovers got them in the Michigan State game. And their margin for error just isn't that big. Uh, and they had been so good defensively in the in the six-game winning streak that those other things didn't matter. But, but it caught up to them the last two weeks. Along with it being a tough loss uh, on Saturday to Purdue, uh, at the end of the game, Chase Brown uh, went down with uh, what looked like a, a lower leg injury. I know it's uh, early Monday as we're taping this, but any update on him? Uh, nothing really. Uh, they'll, uh, they'll, you know, let us know during the course of the week. Uh, you know, it looked like at the very end of the play, like his ankle got rolled a little bit uh, as he was tackled going out of bounds. And that was, the, that was really the, you know, you talk about you're feeling bad about losing the game. I mean, you're down 10 with under 20 seconds to go, and you're trying to get in field goal range to at least make it a one-score game. And, you know, then you lose him. Uh, for the rest of that portion of that game. And you don't know what his certainty is for playing at Michigan. And and so that was kind of a real downer <laughs> at the yeah. end of the game because you realize what happened. And, and then here we got to go to Michigan now and play a really good Michigan team. Potentially without him, we'll see. But, um, you know, he walked off the field under his own power at the end of the game. So that's a good sign. But, you know, cutting against a really good Michigan defense, we'll see. Well, Brian, last year the, uh, the Illini were 5-7. and seven. This year we've seen – Great improvement. Uh, Brett Bielma's done just a, an outstanding job with the program. And, you know, it's not even a full two years yet, but how has he changed the culture so quickly there? Well, you can see why he won so many games at Wisconsin, uh, you know, and, and it helps to have good players too. And, and don't get me wrong, Lovey Smith left him some pretty good players, guys like Pete Randolph and Johnny Newton and Quan Martin and Sidney Brown and people like that. But but he just um, – he's his attention to detail, he's just a professional college coach is how someone described it. Uh, he just knows how to communicate with everybody, players, donors. Uh, he's very, very good at what he does, and he doesn't miss anything. Uh, he's, I always describe it. He's, 
usually when everybody's in the room and everybody's really smart, he knows about, he's thinking about two or three things that people aren't thinking about. And, uh, and you come away going, wow, I hadn't really thought about that. And so he's just, um, I, I think uh, Jerry DiNardo described it on the Big Ten Network, you know, through what Brett, his, his unbelievable immediate success at the age of, you know, in his mid to late thirties at Wisconsin to getting fired, walking off the field at Arkansas to going to the NFL, working for Bill Belichick, uh, wanting another opportunity to coach in college, preferably in the Midwest, and and then getting the Illinois job, we're really getting the best version of Brett Bielema. And, and Brett's even said that, that I think you're getting the best of what I've learned and acquired. And so, you know, just kind of, you know, last year, we should have been in a bowl game last year. I mean, the, the record was five and seven. And, you know, he came in immediately at the end of the year and said, hey, I didn't come here to go five and seven. We're going to do better than that. But, you know, they gave away a couple of games last year. They would have been in a bowl game in year one. And I think the expectation in year two was, hey, let's get to a bowl game this time. And then they start seven and one. And then it's like, you know, holy cow, we could be in the college football playoff, you know, if we were to run the table. And I, I thought at the time, that's a little over our skis right now. I don't think we're quite at that level. Uh, but certainly winning the Big Ten West would have been really nice. But I think there's still a lot to play for. I think when you look, pull back and look at the – the big picture of this season, you're going to be really happy as an Illini fan that a Brett Bielema was the coach and the job he did in year two. But I would just say the simple answer is he's just really good at what he does and uh, recruiting the state of Illinois much more heavily, uh, investing in that, and he's reaping some results from that too. And one of the uh, the really good moves in the off season was bringing uh, Tommy DeVito in. Uh, he's been a real difference maker uh, on that offense, hasn't he? He has. He's a mobile quarterback, uh, but, you know, he doesn't run unless he really has to, but he can, uh, and he's pretty quick at it. Uh, he's really accurate. He's going to – right now he's on, on pace to break the Illinois percentage completion rate for a quarterback. Nathan Shieldhouse held that, and uh, he's about 70%. Now, he had one of the, the – you know, worst, and worst is all relative, but, you know, he just didn't have the same type of day last week against Purdue – uh, and, but he had some receivers drop. We had a flea flicker or one of the tight ends dropped a wide open pass that would have been a touchdown. Um, you know, he had some drops. He had some uh, throws that were a little off, which was uncharacteristic for him because he's been just deadly accurate. And they've kept him pretty clean uh, pr- pretty much throughout the year. So, yes, he's been a big part of the offense and merging him with the new offensive coordinator uh, coming in, uh, you know, from uh, Texas San Antonio, Barry Lunny. Uh, who just got a contract extension, has been a real, uh, he called it an arranged marriage, but it's worked pretty well. The Illini offense, uh, other than uh, DeVito, and of course we all know about Chase Brown, they have some other weapons that uh, are very impressive. And the guy that jumps out to me whenever I've been able to watch Illinois is uh, Isaiah Williams. And he has 64 grabs so far this year, Brian. And he's fast. He really is a game breaker, isn't he? He is. Yeah. And he's funny because he used to be a quarterback and he was a highly recruited quarterback out of high school in St. Louis, Oklahoma recruited him, Nebraska recruited him. Uh, but he wound up coming to Illinois and, and uh, then he just struggled as a quarterback. He never really, you know, got a ton of opportunities when he did. He, he looked a little in over his head. And so he made the switch to wide receiver and then had to learn that position. And he just keeps growing. I don't think he's hit his ceiling yet as to what he could do, but he, He's great in the jet sweeps. He's great in the uh, catches over the middle that he can turn a 10-yard gain into a 60-yard touchdown, which he's done a couple of times this year. And He's got great, great speed. And, and really, he's just really still learning how to play wide receiver, but he's learning it pretty quickly. And over on the uh, defensive side of the ball, we all know how good uh, the Illini are. Top 10 nationally in uh, numerous categories. This is a defense that even when that offense struggles can keep them in any game, can't they, Brian? That's how they've won a lot of games. Uh, you know, is they won a lot of games by 26 to 10. You know, I mean, that they, they wouldn't necessarily uh, score a ton of points. They would, I think they're near the top of the Big Ten in time of possession, so they would chew up a lot of clock. Uh, they were struggling in the red zone a little bit at times. But the defense was so good, number one in so many categories, that even if they struggled in the red zone or didn't score as much as they should, or they had a turnover here or there, the defense was so good. It didn't matter. And so we'd win. If you look at our scores, they're all pretty similar. It was the same formula week after week after week. And, and the Indiana game was the one blip up until the last couple of weeks. And even that game, they dominated physically uh, up front and just uh, beat themselves with some turnovers and penalties. And so, 
Um, yeah, the, the defense has been, especially the front line guys, and that's been part of the issue, is we're just not as deep as a Michigan or an Ohio State or someone like that where you can just plug new guys in. Uh, you know, we have the problem that Minnesota or Purdue or some of the other teams in the Big Ten have, the Big Ten West particularly, that, you know, if, if we get key guys down, then you start juggling pieces around. It just changes the, the look of the defense. And that's kind of what we've seen the last couple of weeks. And, and Michigan State tried to offset the um, pressure we were getting on the quarterbacks repeatedly uh, by throwing a lot of screen passes. And that worked effectively. And we were over aggressive, and they they made us pay for it. And you know we couldn't get to Aiden O'Connell. He just has such a quick release, and you know just those things kind of add up. But yeah, the front line guys, the Browns and the Martins, and uh, all of those guys in the secondary uh, have been just fantastic all year. And then the pressure up front with with Newton and Randolph, or what they call the law firm of Newton and Randolph. Mm-hmm. Those guys are have just been spectacular and uh, getting a lot of pressure. In fact, I think as a combination, they lead the country in, in pressure, but they just couldn't get enough on on either uh, Peyton Thorne uh, two weeks ago or Aiden O'Connell last week. Well, it's Saturday, huge game for both teams. Uh, Michigan has not played a team uh, built like them, uh, and, and I think Illinois is pretty much a mirror image of what they want to do on both sides of the ball, Brian. A lot of intriguing matchups uh, in this game, aren't there? Yeah, there really is. And I, I watched the uh, Michigan game with Nebraska just to kind of get a get a feel. And I was like, man, I felt like I was watching Illinois. I mean, the way <laughs> yeah. the way they control the ball, you know, the running back wears number two. Uh, you know, he's getting the, he's, he's scoring a lot of touchdowns. He's uh, you know they they alternate uh, backs a little bit. They've got you know some good receivers. They've got. Uh, you know, a quarterback that, that just really does a good job running the offense is very efficient and they just kind of chew up a lot of clock and they don't give you a lot of chance to, to get the ball. And then their defense is really solid. So yeah, it, it was, uh, you know, that it was a little bit of a mirror image. You, you know, I don't think we're playing at Michigan's level exactly, but I think that the way the formula is, the way that Brett Bielema did it at Wisconsin and the way he uh, coaches, uh, particularly in the big 10, he's just a big 10 coach. He knows, when the weather gets cold, uh, you got to run with your, you got to win with your running game and a good, efficient passing game. Play complementary football, be good on defense, and take advantage of turnovers. And that's how you win games, especially in November. And and you know that's why Illinois, you feel, matches up well. Now they're playing in Ann Arbor and coming off of two straight losses. How they respond, uh, we'll see. Well, final question before we let you get away, Brian. Uh, I, I know the Illini fan base has to be very happy with what they've seen this uh, this season, and no matter how it ends, uh, they have to think that for the first time, really in a long time in Champaign, Brett Bielma has this program on a good long-term trajectory, doesn't he? Well, he does, and they should be. And I and right now, they'll get through. The, I mean, I was disappointed. My wife had to cheer me up after the <laughs> the game against Purdue. I mean, everybody was getting so excited. This was shaping up and it still can be a really good season, but the way it was breaking at the time after the Nebraska game at seven and one was that, Hey, this is uh, maybe the re the expectations got a little unrealistic, but you know, once we get through the disappointment of these last two losses, we still have a mathematical chance at the big 10 West title. So we might meet again somewhere in the, in Indianapolis. But uh, you know, I think when you look at the big picture, what, what Brett's done in a couple of years and the number of wins. We had had a winning season in a decade. Uh, and to get to a nice bowl game and, and to have contended for the division title, I think will look really good in retrospect. But right now it kind of hurts because uh, everybody was really getting excited about, you know, a potentially a really special season. And uh, now they're going to have to try to bounce back. Well, it is still a big game uh, on Saturday in the big house. A lot on the line, as uh, we all know, for both teams. So noon kickoff, uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Should be fun. Looking forward to getting up there. In November, as uh, Coach Bielma says, and as Coach Harbaugh always says, uh, when, when the calendar flips to November, it's time for the big boys. Absolutely. I think both coaches kind of think alike. So I can... <laughs> I can tell a common theme there between the two. Here with us today as uh, we get ready for the big game on Saturday has been radio play-by-play voice of Illinois football, Brian Barnhart. Brian, always great to have you on the show. Uh, We thank you for your time and look forward to our next visit. Very good. Thank you very much.
On Quick Hits today, thanks again to Illinois Radio Play-By-Play voice Brian Barnhart for being our guest. He's another one of the good guys in the Big Ten. On the injury front, Jim didn't have much to say at his presser. He said, we'll see on uh, Donovan Edwards and Luke Schoonmaker. Other than that, it's week 11, and both teams this Saturday are playing bunged up. We got this show up before the college football playoff show this week, but we'll assume we're still number three. I can't imagine falling at all. But in the end, it really doesn't matter. It's all about taking care of business and controlling what we can. Beating Illinois on Saturday, then going down to Columbus and putting it to the Buckeyes. If we do that, we're in. It's that simple. Of course, we still have to win the Big Ten championship game, but one day at a time, one game at a time has to be our thought process right now. On Thursday's Michigan Game Day show, our guest will be Chris Ballas from the Wolverine, so make sure you join us. That will do it for now. I'm your host, Mike Fitzpatrick. Have a great Wolverine week, everyone. Until we meet again, take care, and as always, go Blue. Thanks for joining us today on The Michigan Man, here on Wolverine Sports Radio, a member of the V Sporto Network, and in partnership with SB Nation's Maze and Brew. Our listener lines are open 24-7 for your calls at 313-263-4842. That's 313-263-4842. Or email us at the Michigan Man Podcast at Yahoo.com. That's the Michigan Man Podcast at Yahoo.com. The Michigan Man Podcast is produced at the studios of Robin Lynn Productions, Allen Park, Michigan, and is not affiliated with the University of Michigan. Go Blue!